checking account is like washing your hair, literally just a wash. And washing with one of those like no sulfate thingies that are allegedly nourishing, but they're not, it strips all your hair. You know, it's no good, but you know, it's necessary. You have to do it, you have to do it. Think of the savings account as conditioning your hair. Conditioning your hair is like, you're conditioning, leave it on for five minutes, then you rinse it out, you know, leave it on. So it gives you some of the benefits of like moisturizing your hair, but it's really not like helping. Like it does, no, it does help, but you could do more. But it, you know, it's good enough, good enough. Think of investing as deep conditioning your hair, but deep conditioning your hair consistently for a year. Consist some of you, have y'all done that? Some of y'all haven't done that, myself included, I'm just saying. But think about that, deep conditioning your hair for a year, every week, every Monday for a year, for two years, for five years, for 10 years, deep conditioning, deep conditioning. And as you get into it, you're getting better deep conditioners, you're better at doing deep conditioning. That is the, exactly what investing is. It is a deep condition for years consistent deep conditioning of your hair. Hello everybody, hi y'all, it's Ashley of Stax and the City, and I wanna say a wonderful hello, and thank you so much for listening to yet another amazing episode, for paying attention, for watching, whatever. Y'all are awesome. To my new subscribers, hello, I am Ashley. I just talk about money all day long and ways to get your money up. So if you all haven't done so already, definitely make sure that you subscribe, you rate, you comment, you like, talk about it, tell your friends, all that, all that and some. So today we are going to talk about the difference between having a checking, saving, and investment account. They are all different. You should have all three and we're gonna, we're gonna jump on in. This is in response to Sierra E's question about having the difference between an online checking account and a traditional brick and mortar checking account. And they are different, but I thought we should take it a step further and really discuss exactly what these three entities all do. So first, the checking account. The checking account is essentially spending, is everything you have there is your spending, spending money, spending money, spending money. I've read that uh, they recommend having whatever your monthly spending is times two, which I can, I, can, I can dig that, I can agree with that. However, average in terms of your um, fixed income, your fixed costs, so your phone bill, your gas, your insurance, all that, you have an idea how much it's gonna cost. It generally doesn't change each month. And any discretionary income, so times going out to eat or going shopping, all that fun stuff, all that should stay in the checking. Because y'all, checking is in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. It's just, it's quick money that's always going out somewhere. You're not really keeping that money. So just think of checking as payment. You're just paying somebody. Be very careful about your checking accounts. Some checking accounts have monthly maintenance fees. In fact, when I was banking with bb and I had a student account, I guess, and for some reason, I guess I wasn't a student anymore, and they started charging me $5 maintenance fee each month that I didn't even really know about. And it wasn't until I called and asked that they told me, because I, I didn't check my statements as closely at the time. So basically, I got my checking account type changed, and now I don't have to pay that maintenance fee. But you all be aware of that. I also recommend getting overdraft protection. So the way a lot of banks make their money is through your your mistakes. So if you're out here shopping away, you have $5 to your name, you spent $100, the bank will pay that extra $100, but they're also gonna be charging you exorbitant amounts of fees for going over the money that you actually have in your account. A lot, a lot, a lot of communities are getting a lot of trouble for that. In fact, I had a colleague that worked at Citibank and she said there was this very rural, poor area that was one of the most profitable banks that she worked at. Poor. like like where I'm from type po. And the reason why is because they make so much money off of overdraft fees. People spending more than they have in their account. You also always make sure that you have enough to spend on whatever it is that you're spending and make sure that you have overdraft protection. So essentially that will not happen to you. It's gonna, if you're making the payment, it's hundred dollars, you only have $5, you won't just gonna get declined as opposed to them paying and tacking you extra money. We're not gonna do that, y'all. We're not doing that in 2019. We ain't owing nobody no money for nothing. Savings account. Now, banks give you incentives for keeping their money in the bank. And the incentive is interest. So just like interest works against us with debt, it also works in our favor with saving. So if you put money into a savings account, they will give you a percentage of interest. So basically money that will build on itself just for keeping the money in the savings account. 
That's it. And the banks have reasons for doing this. A lot of times banks are out here borrowing the money that you have in their accounts for anything. Who knows what they're using it for? Or maybe they're out here giving out loans, this and that. They're literally taking the money you have in your account to borrow. So they're, when they give it back to you, they're going to add a little bit of interest. That's really how savings accounts, the CDs, all that work. They're borrowing, they're basically taking your money for something else, but they're going to give it back. They're giving it back to you. It's, it's interest, interest bearing account. Uh, Dave Ramsey recommends having th uh, three to six months of savings in your savings account before you start investing. Sure, I, I think that's very high. But Dave Ramsey is also very conservative. I would say like three months is solid or if there's a magic number that you have, my magic number is like 10,000. So if you have that, you know, then that's fine. Whatever, I'm, I would say pick a magic number and stick to it. So have that magic number and just and just go for that with your with your savings account. The savings account should not really be touched. It should be touched for emergencies, you all. Emergencies. You don't touch it, e y'all. Where's my emergencies? And y'all, some of us need to evaluate what an emergency is. Finding a last minute dress for us to slay is not an emergency, y'all. Or going out to eat at a restaurant last minute because they didn't invite you beforehand is not an emergency at all. So we're not doing that. I'm talking about some serious emergencies like car issues. You need, you know, you're dipping into the savings or, you know, health emergencies are really, really big for emergencies. Now, there's another account, you all, that I love i wasn't a fan of it at first so i was a little nervous but that's your investment account investment account the investment account you all is important it's pertinent in order to build wealth this is the wealth building account investment accounts are essentially money that you you have money open you put money into it and you invest in different companies and you own a piece of the company and as a result, they're giving you money back if they do well. So let's say you wanna buy a share of a company. Let's say I have a company and it's called Ashley Inc. and it is worth $200 a share. Cool, right? So basically you'll be owning a piece of the company. You purchase a piece of the company. So every time the company does well, then you're gonna do well. Every time the company does bad, you're gonna do pretty bad. It works like that. So generally the stock, market undulates it goes like this it goes up and down up and down up and down until eventually it goes all the way up and as it goes up you're gonna be getting more money and then you're gonna be putting more money into it getting this money up right pow next thing you know you're over here being rich now the thing about the the stock market a lot of people always say what if i lose my money and what if i lose my money and the stock market has been around since the 18th century so it ain't going nowhere you know what i'm saying it's been around for a very long time and even though we have had a lot of plummets including the 2008 recession, including the 1929 crash. There was a crash that happened in the like, 1870s. It still always, always, always goes up. But the thing about the stock market and investing is that it is long term. And when I say long term, I mean like 10, 15, 20 years, years. So if you're going to open up an investment account, you definitely want to put some, put some of your money in there, but you have no intention of touching it like at all. Not until you're ready to retire essentially you get like wealth building is this building it's something that happens very 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 slowly i do recommend that you do open the investment account you can start with as little as a thousand dollars and just whatever you do it doesn't matter how you start but how long you go that's really where it's at it's how long you go so you either invest a little bit of money but you're doing like twenty dollars a month and then eventually you put the increments up and over time, you're going to see that money really, really grow. I'm going to be doing a video on investing specifically. So definitely stay tuned for that if this makes no sense. Thanks to you all so much for listening and taking the time out of your busy lives and schedules. You all are phenomenal. And I will see you all soon. Bye.